This episode of Comedy Bang Bang is brought to you by Squarespace. Turn your great idea into a reality with Squarespace. Squarespace makes it easier than ever to launch your passion project, whether you're showcasing your work or selling products of any kind. With beautiful templates and the ability to customize just about anything, you can easily make a beautiful website yourself. And if you do get stuck, Squarespace's 24-7 award-winning customer support is there to help. Head to squarespace.com slash bangbang for a free trial. And when you're ready to launch, use that offer code bangbang to save 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain. You miss 100% of the shots you don't make. Welcome to Comedy Bang Bang. Thanks to Sir Dance a lot. Oh, that's fun, Sir Dance. That's kind of what we were doing during the uh, during the theme song. Welcome to Comedy Bang Bang uh, for another week. And what a week it is! Coming up a little later on the show, we have an alien. Ooh, wow, we have an alien. Uh, and uh, also a, a musical guest uh, coming up, and uh, that's very exciting. I love uh, hearing the music. A lot of times we'll have music on the show, and uh, people will play acoustic versions of their songs that are out now. That's very exciting. I'm not sure uh, if that'll be happening a little later, but a musical guest coming up. My name is Scott Ackerman. Welcome to the show. And uh, it's always a treat when we have our first guest back on the show. <laughs> I'm stuttering because I'm so overcome with emotion. Uh, she is currently writing upon the table. Uh, I hope it's her name and not some sort of curse word. Uh, but she's a mother now, and she doesn't do that anymore, from what I understand. She's uh, on the straight and narrow, keeping it clean, keeping it high, keeping it tight. Uh, she's one of our favorite guests since back in the early days, and it's always a pleasure to have her on. You know her from such movies as Game Night and such television shows as Brooklyn Nine-Nine, which has uh, jumped over to NBC. She's part of the Peacock family. Please welcome Chelsea Peretti. Chelsea, welcome back. Thank you so fucking much. Whoa, you're cursing already? I'm saying I'm not just a mom. I fucking curse. <laughs> I'll do fucking stand up about how my kids are assholes. Wait a minute. <laughs> I just want this people seems, to like This me. seems really familiar to me. I'm wasn't, unhinged. Wasn't there a comedian who did stand up about? Uh... Yeah, and it worked out great. <laughs> well, I think you may not have stayed until the end of that story. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome, Chelsea Chaz Palminteri Peretti. How yes, are you? Yes, I'm thriving. Ah, <laughs> oh, the uh, too true, too true, mon frere. Too true, mon frere. <laughs> Exactly. If anyone hasn't been listening to this show for six years, they have no idea what we're talking about. Even if they have. Um, welcome to the show. You play uh, Donna on, what is your character's name? Donna on Parks. <laughs> Donna on Parks. <laughs> Who is it? What is she named again? She's, Gina Linetti. She sits in the corner. She and That's me in the corner. Oh, I gotta get you on my REM show. Please Because that was beautiful. Thank you. Me and Adam. I love this. Has anyone told you you have a wonderful voice? Um, my mom. Your mom has. <laughs> She's like, you can really belt them out. <laughs> <laughs> and like, she also told me I had the hands of a pianist and stuff. <laughs> she completely. What were you doing with your hands while she told you this? I was just touching a piano. <laughs> <laughs> You're just fondling a I piano. I was like, touching it over mm. and over. Um, welcome back to the show. Now I say Thank you're you. you're part of, uh, and you're one of our favorites. You know that. <laughs> and how how long did you want to talk about the rain? You had mentioned you wanted to bring it up. Uh, right listen, at I'll the... tell you something. I can stand the rain. <laughs> oh, you really can belt them out. <laughs> I love it. Wow. And I'll tell you what. 
I hope it rains all week. And guess what? It's supposed to. I tell you, wet weather, the Southland <laughs> needs it. We need it, and we'll take it. <laughs> and if you look over here, there's a huge patch of rain coming in. That should last through Thursday. We're looking forward to 12 inches. Oh. <laughs> What if you what if you were a weather person and you just said, Oh, oh baby, after, I after. need at least five. <laughs> at least But twelve? <laughs> but twelve, Mama oh. Mia. Oh, 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 that's good. <laughs> and that's all you did. You barely got the information out about the weather. I, I you think just that's did that. Essentially what happens with them now. Um I mentioned that you are part of the Peacock family. Bung bung bung. Does that send, send a, just a wonderful sense of warmth all over your body, knowing mm. you're part of the peacocks? Oh, it makes me feel so good. Doesn't it? You know, Howard Stern's always complaining about people who have a lot of vocal fry, and like, I do, so now I'm trying to make my voice melodic, and then you sound like Robin. Hi, I'm Chelsea Peretti. Robin <laughs> of Batman and Robin? Come on, Scott. Who are you talking about? Robin. Robin on who? Stern, on the Stern show. Oh, oh, uh, his uh, sidekick person. Yeah. Right. Anyway, <laughs> uh, the point being, I don't think I can make my voice melodic. What if Robin of Batman and Robin talk like that, though? Oh, I'm not familiar with the Holy fucking shit. <laughs> I don't even know what to Batman. say. I don't like. You, you um, have no. You don't like any kind like of superhero, superhero thing. movies. I you're, mean, I'd be in one if you're casting. You're like Natasha Leggero. I remember she she was looking at a magazine or something, and she said to me once, "Who is this Batman?" <laughs> <laughs> I don't like the idea of like good and evil. I think it's a continuum. that's what you don't like. You you're fine with the people dressing up in costumes. Yeah, that's it's fine. just the the. I mean, I tell you that Joker. In that Dark Knight movie, he's a scary guy. Wait, is that Heath Ledger? Yeah, he's a scary terrible, guy. Terrible. The, I mean, he finds crime funny. <laughs> I was, I notoriously didn't like that performance. You didn't like that performance. You yeah. thought, whoa, was, thought he was he going like, for it too much? I, I thought it was just not good. He was, was he belting him out too much? What was he? Uh, he like, wasn't singing. I don't. Too think much, it was too musical. little. What are we talking about? It was just like. <laughs> I'm you don't a, like the lip smacking. I'm, I'm evil. Like I just kind of felt like. All Give right. us your best Joker impression. Okay, know, you, we've seen them all from Cesar Romero <laughs> through uh, the most recent. I guess would be Gerard Lido. I can talk Cesar Milan. Oh, let's talk about him. Uh, We're talking about the so dog whisperer. Dogs. What if Batman fought the dog whisperer? I mean, that sounds like a Batman villain. This is like a nightmare. <laughs> I don't know about Batman. Let's stick to Batman, Chelsea. <laughs> I don't know what to say. What if, okay, and this is a real question. This is like what being you're a on woman Brooklyn, is like. You're on Brooklyn Nine-Nine, right? <laughs> And what if Batman were to help out Brooklyn Nine-Nine this season? And he were just he were to like, you know, catch a few criminals and you'd see him every once in a while. <laughs> this is what being a woman is like. It is. It's like people just, hey, hey, let's talk. Let, uh, meet me on my terms at all times. <laughs> okay, like, what do you want to talk about? Pussies. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, really. I'll talk about any. I'm well-versed the in rain, a fool. variety of subjects. I will talk about Anything that you want to talk about. Okay, you, But you bring you, it to the table. What are your favorite snacks? Snacks, you know, uh, I like those Hava uh, corn chips. Oh, those are good. Yeah, because they put a little soy in them. Now you see, this is rocking and rolling. <laughs> I'm all about what? dynamic convo. What about your favorite snacks? I would love to hear what you put down your gullet. I'm having trouble right now mm. um, figuring one a good one out. So you've moved on from ones that you previously have enjoyed? Yeah. And you've you've burnt out on them? Yeah, I do. I'm kind of into avocados with that Trader Joe's um, chili lime salt on them. Okay. But, uh, but I'm in the market for just a new knockout snack. Well, it's a rainy, the rainy season now. Maybe it you is. need something a little more piping hot. <laughs> and it is. And that's the thing. When it's raining, your palate, did you know scientifically when it rains, your palate actually adjusts? That's right. Your your taste buds expand. Yeah. You start wanting a cinnamon, a cider, um, and actually- A peppermint bark. A peppermint bark. Your body actually changes and expands through mm -hmm. osmosis of the 
palate. That's right. So I think that uh, avocados, they seem more like a summer snack to me. That's right. So maybe you're looking... uh, What's a good winter snack? You know what is good? An English muffin with sharp cheddar on it. If you want to go crazy, put a little marmite under there, you fucking pig. Mm, That sounds good. I remember when I was doing the uh, Thomas's English muffin Mm -hmm. commercials. Oh, man. Yeah. That, on they, this show? On this show, and they made me want to eat them. They're good. They're good. Hey, Thomas's, come on back. We're Thomas talking about you. we miss you. We miss you. So you put a little Marmite, you say? Yeah, you ever had it? From the land down under? Mm-hmm. I've, I, I don't believe I've ever had the pleasure. No, I've never had Vegemite, but I want to try it. Yeah, how bad? Maybe this could be your winter snack. Yeah. Because over there, it's summer. I guess I could do like also butternut squash. And and this is good conversation? <laughs> no, I didn't listen. You put me on the spot. <laughs> I thought actually we were in good conversation. And then you're like, Batman, Batman, Batman. It was that like, to me is like a good Beetlejuice. conversation. Well, what about Beetlejuice? You want to talk about him? He's funny. The old movie? The character in the old movie. He's funny. Mm, who was funny? I just Beetlejuice is funny, fool. What about, let's talk about, uh, I guess, planes, trains, and automobiles. Okay, what do you got on that? When I was younger, I think it flew over my head in some way. and Just I, like the planes, I, the titular planes. <laughs> it flew past like a train. <laughs> now, I rewatched it mm-hmm. recently. What, what part of it did you not comprehend? I just remember that I didn't like it, and I don't mm. remember why. I okay. just was like, you know. John Hughes. So good. 1987 or so. I don't. Yeah, Thanksgiving, nineteen eighty-seven. But it's really fun. So you re- so you like it now. <laughs> so previously did not like it. Currently do yeah. like it. Yes, that's good. Now I tried that with Raising Arizona. Mm-hmm. That's still that's, uh, you know what? St- still don't I, like it. Yeah, I enjoyed it, but it's just not. It's never going to be one for me that I'm like, oh, I fucking mm. this gets me right where it needs to. Like some people love. Yeah, it. Yeah, some though. people don't get it. Um, does you love it? <laughs> Do you love it? No, I think that's one of the worst things anyone can say when know. someone is saying they don't like something is right. someone goes, oh, it's, yeah, yeah it's some people you. don't get it. No, they, they're they implying that you don't you don't like it because you don't understand it. Right. I Anytime it. anyone says that to me, I go, I fucking get it. I just don't like it. I'm not buying it. Yeah. So so nowadays you like Planes, Trains. Yeah. What, what is appealing about it to you? Is it John Candy's performance? Yes. Is it the themes of yeah. wanting to be home? Yeah. <laughs> I also, is that what you're thinking right now you would rather be home no mm. I, I love being here in mm. all honesty yeah um but i loved how simple the story is and yes. my thing is that movies now everyone's like it needs a set piece like something yes. huge they need the a stakes need to be like as big as the world the yeah. world is gonna explode no let's dumb it down let's go back to man wants drive Man can't drive. No, that's dumber than it is. <laughs> it's just he wants man to go lo- home for Thanksgiving. Man loves plain. Man breathe air. <laughs> <laughs> but basically, it's just so simple. And I feel like nowadays it's like, yeah, the stakes have to be through the roof. Exactly. There has to be crazy twists. There has to be huge set pieces. If it were happening now, it would be like Steve Martin needs to to go back home because he needs to deliver his the, wife's baby. Yeah, or or he needs to deliver the uh, the 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 cure to cancer that needs to get to all the people in the hospital in time. Yeah, you know, or the whole hospital dies. Or yeah, the, the, the there's uh, some sort of like virus the entire world is suffering from, and if he doesn't get back, no, the guy wants to get back. Because he loves his wife. He loves his wife. He, and he loves her. He lo- The relationship between Steve Martin and his wife in that movie is Who played just, his wife? Do we even I know? I don't know. No idea. I think you see her, don't you? Some broad. <laughs> you know what I mean? Is that the kind of movie you'd like to make? To yeah. be in the wife role? Yeah. Not the wife role. <laughs> Almost never. That's a, actually a good game is if there's any wife role in any movie that's ever been made. That's, that's ever good. been good. Yeah, I don't um, know. I can't think of one. What's that one with Kate Winslet, Revolutionary Road? Uh, the one with uh, Leo DiCaprio yeah. where they argue about, yeah. I, all I remember, I they, do that. they were arguing a lot about some sort of baby related issue. Yeah. Spoilers, well, full also, on spoilers. No, she was like wanting to do something. What she, she wanted, wanted a to career. do? She, what did she want to do? What was her career? I, did, I remember so little. Did she want to uh, be a professional uh, uh, Avon uh, lady? Scott. <laughs> Scott. That's a nice little career for a, 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 a woman. Careful now, Scott. <laughs> it's all fun and games till you're trending. Is there, <laughs> is there a film where you would like to do a, uh, a female reboot? 
where where the uh, the the male role was really good, but they you you know you'd like to well, I a guess flip. What, they call yeah. it a flip. The flip. Every movie. Every movie. I would love to do a male reboot of that uh, last Ghostbusters. <laughs> <laughs> Oh my God, Scott! You're talking like the common, man, the forgotten man. No, but what what is your favorite movie of all time? See, um, I'm coming down to your level. Well, are we talking? I don't know. I well, I've never had like one favorite movie. Do you? Okay, no, uh, I have. I have maybe one. I remember I when I was 19. I, I went on a first date. Yeah, I look I looked that good. Yeah, I yeah. Can't whistle. It's like all my dad used to make fun of my whistle too. It's like. And your daddy would make fun of you? Oh, there it goes. When I was 19, I, I went on a first date with a, yes, with a girl. Go, give her one, too. Good. And uh, her mother came out. Give her one. She came out? <laughs> That's right. And she was she was grilling me, but she wanted to grill me about like w- what movies I liked and stuff like that. Yeah, that that's, was a bad one. And I said... Uh, um, she said, what's your favorite movie? And I said, uh, probably Back to the Future. And she gave me this look of disdain and scorn. And she said, no, but what's your favorite serious film? And I, thinking fast, I said, The Godfather. And then she gave me a nice nod and said, ah, there you go. But, Trash. But, st- you know, it is. It's a, it's better than The Godfather in a lot of ways, don't you think? Well, comedies never get their due. Exactly. I mean, when will we see a teary speech at the Oscars from a fucking comedy genius? That's what I want. Exactly. That's the Oscars I want. That's right. Like, like who is who do you think working in film is one of our great comedians right now? Well, Melissa McCarthy. Melissa McCarthy. She should give a teary. She's doing all these dramas. Can you ever forgive me uh, for leaving comedy? No, I can't. Did you see? I haven't seen that yet. I have seen it. How was it? It's um, uh, it's about seven reels. It's wonderful. Did you cry? Uh, I don't think it's really a crying film. It's more of a, oh, gosh. Hmm. Uh, remember when Jennifer Aniston did that sad movie and everyone was like, <gasps> Whoa, she did it! Well, Jennifer Aniston, sad movie, I guess I'm not placing it. Which one are we talking about? I don't know. It's like the she, where, Oh, where she didn't look good, right? That's yeah. the thing. It's, that's what everyone's like, I'm not doing makeup this time. That ever, that's the one trick they have because, like, when does someone get Guess to— Guess what? I look like shit in everything I do. <laughs> Where's my award, you fucking Hollywood phonies? But also, women don't get to gain weight for roles like Robert Zero. Robert Zero and Kristen Bale. Oh, wow, he put on 40 pounds. Mm-hmm. Well, if a woman were to do that, people go, oh, we're not casting She'd be you. laughed out of town. Exactly. That's just how it is here. It's not fair. It's not. I'm um, on your side. Um, you know, with all seriousness, if you're thinking about gaining weight for a role and you're listening right now, you can get gout. Yeah, you can. So be careful. I'm I'm like, I, I uh, have gained about 10 pounds and I feel like I need to start like going out there and saying, are there any roles that I could gain 30 more for so I can like justify it? And the answer you know? is write that movie. <laughs> <laughs> About a guy who gains 30 pounds yeah. <laughs> during the sh- course of shooting? That's your pitch. Okay, this is good. That's the start of your pitch. This is good. Chelsea, we got to talk about it. Um, Brooklyn Nine-Nine, uh, you're part of the Peacock family, uh, yeah. but you you are soon to no longer be part of the Peacock family. Uh, you're being excommunicated from the family. <laughs> uh, the Peacocks are turning their backs upon you as you have- spraying me with Peacock shit. <laughs> <laughs> you have come to Daddy Peacock and you have said, Daddy Peacock, I no longer wish to be part of the family. And they sprayed their shit upon you. Yeah. Tell us about this situation. You know, uh, so many times in life as we hit different kinds of crossroads shrouded in mystery and mm. intrigue. You operate primarily in the shadows. That's right. Yes. And so I tend to sort of spin this way, spin that way, and mm. then boom, I'm on a horse riding off into the sunset. I said, hey, who put me on this horse? You're like a cornerback who's escaping, uh, you know, uh, being tackled, who then turns into a cowboy and jumps on a oh, horse. I love football. Yes. Uh, football, and ba- if, football and Batman. Football and Batman. My two interests. If. Uh, football and Batman. If Batman. <laughs> you pegged me. If Batman were to play football against the Joker. Who would win? <laughs> the football. <laughs> Am I right? So what's, America, America, it'd exactly. Be so it'd be amazing. So you're, but you're leaving Brooklyn 
nine nine. <sighs> yeah. You've already, in fact, <laughs> you you know, there's only been a couple episodes on uh, when this comes out, but you've already left. You've That's already, right. You've already taped your goodbye scene. There's such a delay, you know. You've already let that door hit you in your ass as That's you left. That's right. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm. It went through a lot, but I left my heart on the floor, I'll tell you that. Yeah, you leave it all there, uh, out there, oh, during mama. the scene? Yeah? <laughs> yeah. You projectile cry during the scene? Mm. I, I shared a, a lot of intensity with Andy Samberg. Yeah. Um, Here, here's, here's what I want to know. And uh, I know that your goodbye scene is what? What episode are we talking uh, in the season? Is it around sixteen or fifteen oh, or so? You don't even know. But <clears throat> here's why: you say that you cry, like you have an intense scene with Andy Samberg. I've always wondered this about shows like comedy shows. Like, what excuse are you giving for leaving that? That you're you're crying. It's like you just quit a job. People quit jobs all well, the time. You go, hey, a lot right, of I'll see you later. You're making okay. a lot of assumptions. You're making a lot of assumptions. I don't know if you quit a job. Maybe you're maybe you die. You're dying as it happens or something. Maybe I'm but dying in real life. Maybe you're dying in real life. I would love to know that if you are. Can I'll you tell me right now? DM text me you. later. Yeah, DM. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> don't even text me. Just like do a Twitter DM. <clears throat> but you know what I mean. Like people quit jobs and they go. All right, hey, it's your last day. And then basically they just bring out a little shitty cake and people go, okay, I'll keep in touch. They don't keep in touch. Like, isn't that the realism? No, because that's not exactly the situation. Okay. And I personally, there's no benefit to me going into the situation fully. <laughs> so, Probably not. It's still weeks and weeks, so. if not months away. <laughs> Let's talk Batman. Let's, oh, you'd rather talk about it. <laughs> what would you rather talk about? Why you left uh, Brooklyn Nine-Nine or Batman? Batman. Okay, you're forced to talk about Batman. Now. <laughs> All right? Yeah. Okay, so what what Batman movies have you seen? None. I've seen you snippets, never, snippets of heat. You've never, you didn't see the 1989 Michael Keaton, Jack Nicholson Batman? Um, listen, as much as I am a total Keaton head, <laughs> I fucking dropped the ball on that shit. So how old were you in 1989? 48. <laughs> <laughs> okay, a little old for it then. <laughs> I aged out, but... That's never stopped me before. So you didn't see Batman. You didn't see Batman Returns. But you, then I saw the Batman after that. You saw Batman Forever with no, Jim, it was Jim Carrey? the Batman after the Batman. that. <laughs> <laughs> Did you see the one with Jim Carrey? You had to have been the he right... He played Batman? He played the Riddler, oh, my dear. I love Jim Carrey. <laughs> I so, genuinely do. So, do you? Yes. Okay. Yeah, I, uh, uh, I mean, met he's him a little party. kooky on like, the yeah, whole He's a little EMT. kooky now. What is that? But, EMT? DMT? His videos, like he's on DMT, saying how great it is and stuff. I don't know what that is. It gets a little kooky if you go into the dark corners. He's painting of the a lot. He's, he's very obsessed with politics. Yeah, I but, like his uh, art. I like his art. Yeah, I like his message. I think that I loved comedies in my youth, which was. Um, but that's that's the thing. He came out with Ace Ventura. Someone yawning right into the mic. So bullshit. <laughs> Just wait till this motherfucker gets his turn. <laughs> I'm about to be fucking banging my mic on the table. <laughs> oh, sorry. My head fell on my mic on top of the table. So he comes out with Ace Ventura, The Mask, and Dumb and Dumber in one yeah. year, in 1993. That was one That was year? one year. He came out with Ace Ventura uh, in January, The Mask in the Summer, Dumb and Dumber in November. T- two masterpieces. <laughs> yes, I don't like The Mask all that much either. <laughs> but but uh, so he comes out with those three in that year, and then he's in Batman in 95, I believe. So you're prime, like you love Jim Carrey. Why didn't you go see Batman uh, 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 forever? Nothing, nothing I love enough to go see a Batman movie. <laughs> Really? So even at that age, I, I couldn't like even evil. presume to know the what age you is, It's not even that I don't like good versus evil. I don't like evil characters. Like, I don't like watching someone evil <laughs> attack people that are weak. Although I will say I liked Jessica, whatever. Um, what was that show on Netflix where just like <coughs> Jessica Jones or something? Jessica Jones. It's a, that's a I comic did like book. I like that. One. So you, you, what about but Disney films like with Ursula no, and the Little Mermaid? Didn't. You don't like evil. No, I didn't grow up watching Disney, so I'm not that familiar with them. What'd you grow up watching? PBS I was allowed, or some shit? What do you, I mean. Wa- first of all, watch your tone. <laughs> <laughs> Second of all, I grew up watching one half hour of TV a week. A, what, a week? And how would you pick? Would you watch um, snippets of just a, of 30 that's things? Funny. <laughs> That's so like the internet era, <laughs> like how you would handle it. No, I watched like Cosby Show, Rest in Peace, for a while, and I Wait, watched the show or him, <laughs> the, him, uh, in Living Color, 
Wonder Years was a huge one. Okay, so you would you would cycle in whatever show. Yeah. Uh, would you, would they with children? I think would I, they be taped or would you watch? Would you pick the one you were going to watch live? I think live. So you yeah. would that. So at the Sunday of every week, you would say, "Mom, mother, I have picked my show," mm-hmm. and you would say, "Tuesday." I shall watch Growing Pains. And she would say, Cheerio, good <laughs> sir. And I'd say, Mom. And she's like, Yeah. I'm like, What are we doing? She's like, I don't fucking know. So, how does one go from being a somewhat sheltered child who is not allowed to? I mean, were they taking you to the great museums of the world or were they just depriving you of all art? Well, they assumes a marital success. Sorry, sorry. When I say they, <laughs> I, I'm using the pronoun in term because I don't oh, know if it's oh, your mother my or mom, your. She might identify yeah, as a as they. A they. Um, no, uh, yes, my dad used to take me to museums a lot. Uh, the other thing is that I used to binge watch all cable shows that existed at my dad's on the weekends. Okay. So I had a very fractured relationship. So on the weekends, you're watching a ton of TV. Yeah. And okay. during the week, you're watching almost none. Right. Okay. So I mean, that's not too bad. Yeah. But then when I stopped going there, I don't know how it all panned out, actually. But, mm. yeah, I was limited. Compared to other people, there's a lot of things I haven't right. seen. Well, I didn't have a television for about three years from uh, probably 10 to 13. Because so. you were Mormon by I, choice. Yes, by choice. Uh, yes, exactly. That was your weird rebellion. I remember you saying that. At yeah, the- I just really identified with it. Uh. The whole just <laughs> climbing into a cave with Joseph, whatever his name is. What is yeah. his name? Lamour. Lamour. Joseph Lamour <laughs> climbing into a cave. I was like, I'm in. <laughs> Tell me no more about it. Uh-huh. But um, so so how does one then go, well, you know what? This is the field I want to be in. This thing I don't know anything about. Um... Well, again, I did binge it really hard on. on so the, you're a liar, basically. I'm a liar and a thief. Because <laughs> you started off the whole premise was I only watched one half hour of television a week, and now I find out well, you're watching is, hours uh, and hours of uh, it. Well, you know what? I don't. I, really I don't know where I am it, with you. I don't know like how to relate. I don't remember how exactly it broke down, but then I started going to my dad's every other weekend, and okay. I, then we just would have dinner one night a week. So I think like there wasn't it's very a, suspicious. Well, listen, you know what? Divorce is not easy to understand. That's right. Maybe everything's jumbled up in your head because of these uh, uh, complicated emotions that you're just starting to unpack now. You know what? That's exactly it. Yeah. So So I'm still kind of unpacking. My therapist went out of town for one year. (laughs) One one year? (laughs) He literally went out of town for one year when he told me, I'm like... (sighs) Okay, should be good. And did I he feel give like you any sort of like? I have a colleague uh, whom you can. He uh, did, and then I went to that colleague, and he was wearing a black turtleneck, uh-oh. and I was like, I have to go. Yeah, like it was like instantly. Was, I'm like, you're a hack. Yeah, and like he, he was about to to do an Apple presentation. <laughs> yeah, like, and then he yeah. also looked a little like to me. I, I I see a guy normally, but this guy, I was like, I don't like this energy. Hmm. And then also, um, he seemed like he was falling asleep. And also, mm. he costs like three times as much as my therapist. And I, so this I seems just, like a scam. Like, hey, I'm going to go out of town, <laughs> but I'll refer you to this right. person that costs three. And then he doesn't really Takes go out of money, town and they split the back. money. Yeah. Yeah. He's like, yeah, not tan, not changed in any way. <laughs> right. But anyway, so I'm looking Is that the for, only way to tell if someone's gone on a trip, if they're tan yeah. or not? It seems like there would be other ways to... If you're white, that's a big tell. <laughs> it's a big tell. So are you are you not being uh, taken care of this year? No. Then? I mean, not. I have been... I feel like my energy as someone whose therapist was out of town for yeah. a year. So th- and that's probably why you're lying about the television, you know, and how much you watched as a kid. I really watched very little. I just so like, it's gone from a half hour to a lot to now a little. You're so. I wonder who hurt you, and what made you so suspicious. Is that what your therapy is like? Is wondering about the other person, the person who's talking to you? No, thank God. I have honest boundaries. Like mm. I went, I went to a therapist once in L.A. who was like asking questions that I was like, this doesn't feel. What kind of questions are, are not allowed? Or like she was telling anecdotes about her own child. Okay. This feels own, more like a marriage. I'm like, we're not yeah. friends. I need like strong, strong boundaries. Right. She was trying to bond with you and going, Oh, I relate mm. because of here's and then what asking happened to me. questions about like red carpets and stuff like, oh. or like about press that she saw. I'm Do like, you have a really good red carpet story? 
Um, God, no, there are so. I mean, stressful. you, you, I would see you at a few of these <laughs> last year. I was only nominated for a, a, a stinking handful of awards last year. I was nominated for none, but I, but I was, but you were going fuck after having a baby. <laughs> but you were going a lot of them because your husband, <laughs> yes, uh, was nominated for a lot. Yes, he uh, was last year, and so Here's I would see you every once in a while. Yes, I, the thing about award shows that like people don't realize is that. It's literally like a 16 hour commitment. It's a lot of work. It's it's really not that fun unless you're super in the mood for it. But even then, it's like if you could shave five hours off the experience, you have to do a fitting. You yeah. have to do hair and makeup. Hair and makeup. You have to hours drive before you got to get there a long time before. Yeah. Then you sit there. The thing is always like three to five hours. Three to five hours. They're terrible. It's just too much. It's too much stuff. Why don't we? We're in the future. Let's combine them all into the awardees. Or do a live stream where seriously, everyone like let's get in. let's get the golden. Globes, the Oscars, the Grammys, every award to just combine into one night. Make it 24 hours. Make it a marathon. I don't care how long it takes. Yeah. But it's just one night and we bang, 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 bang them all out. One 24-hour award show. <laughs> yeah. Oh, can you? That is so <laughs> fucked. And then also it just feel like everyone's just winning or the same person wins like 12 times. Well, that's the other thing about the about award shows in general is approximately 80% of the people in that room are angry by the end of the night. Right. And that's not a fun party. No, or feeling like deep within themselves, tragic failure. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And also, it's like, I always think when I was a kid watching tons of TV, <laughs> <laughs> I always felt the wrong people won. Yeah. Like, when I was a kid, I had different tastes. You're like, I want E.T. to win. Um, the character. I never saw that. No, I'm kidding. I did. It's so sad, though, that show. <laughs> I mean, Peter Coyote in that is very evil. I don't even know that. I just remember that white tent and E.T. all that sickly and uh, it's just too dark. And then never ending story, that horse sinking. And it's just Mm. like too many sad things. What is what? So what (laughs) what movies do you like? You've described almost every movie hasn't has a uh, or an antagonist. Yes. That has nefarious intentions. I loved Rushmore. Rushmore. Mm-hmm. Okay, so that's that's a movie where his failings are his own. There is no evil in the world. Uh, it's just uh, the the main character. And spoilers on, of course, uh, <laughs> makes poor choices, but yeah. you root for him. Yeah. So it's it's not it's not like there are evil people out there trying to oppose him. I mean, there's just not like I don't think there would be a villain in that movie. What if there was though? What if there was like you know Batman and the Joker? <laughs> what if there was a Joker type in Rushmore, where it was like Jason Schwartzman? It was a dual role. <laughs> no, only <laughs> if it was Heath Ledger's <laughs> version, and he so, comes into the school. Hey, <laughs> hey. <laughs> hey, Max. <laughs> And you're like, ooh, you that would must be, good. be evil, honey. Let's, if you're out there and you have editing capabilities, <laughs> let's see uh, a great mashup video yeah, if you want to make it. bring him into Rushmore. That would and be p- fun to watch. Please send them all to Chelsea at her they Twitter. They won't she, go viral because it's <laughs> 2019. <nope>. <laughs> <laughs> but we'll love them. Well, look, Chelsea, we have to take a break, but okay, I feel like we, we covered Batman. No, yeah. stay, please. <laughs> <laughs> we we covered Batman pretty well. We have an alien coming up, so this is it. You want to be talking to an oh, alien? Oh, I love don't alien you? movies. And we have a singer. A you, singer? Yeah. So maybe you know you, you know you're able to belt really belt him out. You know, and our they our, used to call me Jeff Singer. They did yeah. really. <laughs> Why the Jeff? I guess. <laughs> well, are you familiar with who Jeff Singer is? I, I don't. Who oh, is that? Okay. Who is Jeff Singer? He used to book a comedy show in New York called Eating It. <laughs> <laughs> so they, when I was coming up as a stand-up, he was like the guy to like put you on. So they called you Jeff Singer. I was just saying it. As oh, a I get it. For this those, is fun. This is fun. Who, I like it. It's just word association. Just for my generation of comedians based in New York. Mm-hmm. If Good you're stuff. listening, hi guys. <laughs> if you're one of the twenty. <laughs> All right, we need to take a break. We will have the aforementioned singer when we come back, and an alien a little bit later. We'll be right back with more comedy. Bang bang. <laughs> guys over here, right? Those men, guys, we're terrible. Should just end there. Guys are terrible. No, but there's more. Guys are terrible at taking care of their health. Aren't we? Whether it's a knee injury or a bad back, something worse. Guys are usually a little more comfortable rubbing some dirt on it than seeing a doctor. Uh, You know? I, uh, the, uh, I, there are periods in my life where I was scared to go to a doctor because I didn't want to know what the doctor was going to say because I knew they were going to say something terrible and it would just weigh on me. Well, you got to go to a doctor. You got to take care of your health. This is the same, by the way, 
It's true for erectile dysfunction. Studies show 70% of guys who experience ED don't get treated for it because they don't want to go see a doctor. Well, thankfully, Roman, who is Roman, by the way? Who's this guy, Roman, who's so obsessed with, <laughs> with people's penises? Well, anyway, look, Roman created an easy way to get checked out by a doctor and get treated for ED online. Here's what it is. Roman is a one-stop shop where licensed U.S. physicians can diagnose ED and ship medication right to your door. With Roman, there's no waiting rooms. There's no awkward face-to-face -face conversations. There's no uncomfortable trips to the pharmacy. You can handle everything online. All you got to do is just visit GetRoman.com slash BangBang. You fill out a brief medical onboarding, chat with a doctor, and you get FDA-approved ED meds delivered to your door in a discreet, unmarked package. Erectile dysfunction is a problem most guys don't tackle, but with Roman, it is easy to take care of it. For a free online visit, go to GetRoman.com slash BangBang. That is GetRoman.com slash BangBang. For a free online visit, GetRoman.com slash BangBang. <laughs> What's your New Year's resolution, huh? <laughs> Tell me. Tweet me. What's your resolution? Um, here's one of mine. I got to get more rest this 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 new year. Look, I can barely even say it. I got to sleep right now. <laughs> a quality night's sleep, here's what it does. It helps you recover from distractions faster. It helps prevent burnout. It helps you make better decisions. It helps you improve your memory. And overall, it just helps you make fewer mistakes. It's not marketing, all right? This is just science I'm talking about here, okay? I'm not trying to, to feed you a line here. This is science, all right? This is clinical. To help you get that rest you need, you need a better mattress. And to design a better mattress, Lisa, the company, not the woman, leveraged over 30 years of experience and hundreds of hours of testing to develop the perfect mattress for all body shapes and sleeping styles. Lisa's mission, and they have one, is to provide a better night's rest for everybody. Through their 110 program, by the way, they're out there donating mattresses. Every 10 mattresses they sell, they donate a mattress. That's more than 31,000 mattresses and counting, which tells me they have sold 310,000 mattresses, which is not bad. Not too shabby, Lisa. Lisa strives to leave the world better than they found it, and that doesn't just stop with mattress donations. Together with the Arbor Day Foundation, Lisa's out there planting trees. That's right. They're planting one tree for every mattress that they sell. I sleep on a mattress, which means that there's some tree out there with my body shape. <laughs> if you can find it, take a picture of it. Um, I love my Lisa mattress, and you will too. Start 2019 well-rested. Get $160 off a Lisa mattress at lisa.com slash bangbang and use the promo code bangbang at checkout. That's l-e-e-s-a dot com slash bangbang. Promo code bangbang. <laughs> Comedy Bang Bang, we're back here. Chelsea Peretti is with us. One of the uh, farts in pro four. Oh, uh, should we do five? Uh, <laughs> Probably we not. Can't. <laughs> should we get? Oh, should we replace him? Uh, is that crazy? <laughs> who can we get? That is a good question. That it would make who is so mad? <laughs> who is this? Who is the new Harris Whittles? Um, mm, that is such a good question. What if we just put Armin in. Oh, my God. Pure rage from the grave. <laughs> All right. We need to get to our next guest. He is uh, a singer, and he's been on the show before. Uh, he was on the show last year, and we uh, learned a lot about him. Uh, he is uh, primarily works within the 80s new wave genre. He was uh, uh, very popular back then. Please welcome to the show, back to the show, Martin Sheffield Lickley. Hello. Hello. Hello, my darling lovelies. Hello. How are we doing? I'm good. It's very nice to see you. This is Chelsea Peretti. Hello, Chelsea. Oh, hi. How are you? I'm good, thank you. Um, oh, that's good. <laughs> my homage. <laughs> uh, Martin, uh, let me remind our, our listeners and Chelsea here, who was not here when we recorded last and probably has not listen to the episode, although I, I listen every you do. Week I know you're a big fan. Month. Every weekday. <laughs> <laughs> um, you are a singer. That's correct. Uh, you had uh, uh, a band. Uh, yes. A musical two combination. plus two equals love. Two plus two equals is love. Is the name of my band, but you, you'll have to forgive me. 
Um, I'm a bit of a sourpuss today. Uh, I'm so sorry. Too. A yeah, long right. story. <laughs> You were, uh, 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 but I've had creative differences with my band. Oh, I see. Two plus two equals love. All right. So well, I've, the last time that we we heard from you, you were still in the band. Two plus two equals love. That's right. And we caught up with you because you had had uh, several singles where you talked about various tragedies. Yes, uh, I lost my wife. I lost my son. I oh. lost my postman. I lost. Oh. I knew. I know one person in every cemetery in, in the world. Well, no, in America and in the America. UK. Oh, okay. yes. And, Were you close with your postman? Because oh my god, yes. I mean, I see him all the time. Martin Still. would forge just these white hot relationships. Well, yes, we were very will they, won't they, and he would deliver my mail. <laughs> <laughs> there was a question whether he would deliver. Deliver your mail or not? <laughs> well, we will where they won't they. I mean, it's right there in the whole rhyme. He Neither always hail would. nor rain nor sleep nor yeah. snow. He but always not, would. not since the shutdown. Oh, that's true. That's, that's a good true. Point. That's Political. true. But yes, I have mm. split with them and I am a solo artist now. You're a solo artist. Well, yes. congratulations. Thank that's you. Wonderful. Thank you. Yes, I taught myself how to use a drum machine and a synthesizer, and now I am making the music that I really want to make. So your band members were primarily uh in charge of the drum machine and the synthesizer. <laughs> yes. And you were in charge of vocals. Yes, absolutely. Yes. That was the uh that's how you split up uh the 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 jobs. Yeah, me, drumming machine and synthesizer. And so we, now now you're doing all now of them. Now I'm doing all of them yeah. and uh, you know, I'm done with that top 40 horse shit. Oh, okay. I you know, I must I'm confess for. I had never heard any of your songs <laughs> before you did the last episode. So I don't know that they were in the top 40, but we, they were well, aspiring to be in the top. Were, 40. They were. They were. They were top okay. 40 esque. Um, mm, that's but interesting. <laughs> they, uh, you know, my new music is is music that I've always wanted to write. So this is a change of pace. Exactly. Now, yes. I, I remember uh, Garth Brooks, uh, Chelsea. I don't know if you're a Brooks head. Oh, major. Remember when he uh, uh, got that alter ego, uh, Chris, uh, what was his name? Chris Gaines, remember? And he just, he wanted to do more like uh, uh, personal music, mm-hmm. not in the country genre. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I would imagine Very. that. Very yeah. similar what I'm doing. I mean, mm-hmm. I haven't changed up my look much, but my songs are now they're raw. How would you roar. describe your look? I mean, uh, I, I I look like a cold tan bird, right, with yes. no feathers, right. Mm. <laughs> so That's something accurate. very cold, but has just gone on a trip. Yes, just because well, you know I just went on a trip because I'm <laughs> tan. Yes, that's the, our one right. piece of evidence. Exactly. But I took a trip away from my bandmates. But my new music is it's roar. It's and it's me bearing my soul. Is, you mm. mean roar? Like you're saying raw? I think it's roar. his English. Yeah, uh, it's his so roar. Not, not roar, because Katy Perry did that. No, right. no, no, no. It's raw. More it's his English roar. accent. He's from the southern part of English. Yes, England, oh, bring, Bringington. Bring. Well, uh, I'm actually from Wilkinshire, Derbyshire, Flat Groundshire. Oh, I ran through that field. <laughs> yeah, it's crazy, it's, right? It's, it's, a, it's. I think I wouldn't say beautiful. But it's not beautiful. It's, it's urban. It's yeah. A, yeah. Yes. It's yes. a field, yet somehow urban. <laughs> Very. Yeah. A lot of trash in it, yeah, yeah, yeah. but it is rural, but it feels urban, yes, yeah. yeah. (laughs) But I wrote... Uh, uh, my my new song is a. Uh, this is me bearing my. This is and this is more personal music for you, even though your previous songs were seem very personal about your son being dead. Yes, and no, this is very personal. This is more personal than those. Way more personal. How I'm, old was your son when he died? He was eight years old. Oh my god! It was a big tragedy. He he wanted to write a tears in heaven type song. Right, I was gonna say, but his yes. son didn't fall big out the window. No, yeah. my song, my son. Died of emphysema, so it was a different song than Are Tears you a in smoker? Heaven. I'm not. No, you've never seen that video. <laughs> There's that little video, that little kid smoking ciggies. Yeah. The little YouTube yes, video. Yeah. My son watched that and started smoking cigs. Oh, God. And then. And you've never seen that video, so you're. I won't watch it. Because if well, you do, how you'll. do you now? Yeah, no, it's killed so many people. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but this new song is is me bearing my soul. You've said that several times, and I'm excited to, to hear it. <laughs> yeah, so... Can I ask you one question? Yes. Did you bring some of these songs? I did. I have them here. We have Okay, well, why don't we hear some of them? This is this Martin Sheffield Lickley. This is me bearing this my soul. This is you bearing your soul. soul. Here we go. Hit it. I'm working out at the love gym where the muscle you train is your heart instead of punching bags they have kissing bags and the personal trainer is your wife 
<laughs> the Love Gym charges a membership, but instead of cash, you pay with a hug. Love Gym don't got a swimming pool. Instead, they got a kissing room. A kissing room is a room where you kiss. Don't understand? I explained it clearly. The Love Gym don't have any towels. You wipe your sweat with little chocolates. There are no trebles and there are no weights. All it has is a kissing room. The Love Gym is not a very good gym. If you want to work out, go to a normal gym. A normal gym. The Love Gym. A belly total fitness, but for love instead. Thank you. <laughs> oh, I'm like crying. <laughs> That's Thank you. so personal. Thank you. Remember, you can't trust anyone. That's the <laughs> message that of that song. That was the theme song. of that? I, uh, maybe I didn't get it yeah, for that. But, re- uh, can you see re- it again? No, re- I'm, <laughs> I'm kidding, of course. Wow, amazing. Yes. Martin. And also just, it's, it reminded me of some of Beyonce's music where you're really tripping over the words <laughs> so quickly and yeah. there's no way I could karaoke that because it's no like clear rhythm. No. Or yeah, and also the words would turn pink so quickly yeah, I wouldn't know exactly. Yeah, you'd be racing and rushing. Well, and, the yeah. key to good music is to take the biggest inhale of your life yeah. and then speed through it. Uh-huh. Hmm. So what what was that song based on? You mentioned it was personal, but uh, it seemed to be about some sort of a ballet gym. <laughs> a, a gym with chocolates. Okay. And no well, that was obvious. Room. That was me. I've been I'm dealing with right. tragedy. You're dealing with stuff. Uh, you did that mention. was a metaphor. You mentioned the trainer is your wife, but wasn't your wife dead? <laughs> well, she was, but it's a metaphor. Uh, oh, okay. Got it. That's you know, actually. The wife planes, is a metaphor. Planes, the gym is real? Yeah, it's all a metaphor. Okay, it, everything is a metaphor. Everything the gym, is a the metaphor. wife, yeah, the, all yeah. the fixings. Okay. But it was devastating. You know, my former bandmates, they continue to tour as they do. two plus two equals love. That doesn't seem right. I mean, it seems like, you know. I uh, know, it's awful. And they have a new lead singer. Who's this? Fathington Cheshire Davies. Oh, no. I know. Oh. We got to get him on the show. That daft boozer. <laughs> but he's so hot and his Instagram is amazing. Chelsea. <laughs> what? No. <laughs> he has an Instagram? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. What's you, on it? Um, lots of like what's shirt, it? Shirt, <laughs> it. shirtless what's selfies. What's on it, Chelsea? <laughs> lots of like shirtless selfies, and he Father does dead. peace signs. Oh my gosh. god! Well, I've already written a song about him. I'll have to add that into it. Mm. You've written a song about yeah. This Far- what's his name again? Farthington, Farthington Cheshire Davies. You've written a song about it. Yes, this next song about it is about what it's like to get stabbed in the back. Oh. Hit it. I got bit by the bug of love It laid an egg inside my heart I went to the doctor to see him He said my stomach was full of love eggs The doctor prescribed me 100 kisses After that he said the eggs would hatch So he kissed my stomach 200 times And then the eggs did their hatching dance Now my stomach is full of bugs And my heart is full of love This is an accurate metaphor for how all people fall in love. Love eggs, love eggs coursing through my veins. Love eggs, love eggs, they're eating up my brain. Love eggs, love eggs, I can't get enough. Love eggs, love eggs, they're hatching in my gut. Thank you, thank you. Wow. Oh, this doctor needs to be... (laughs) Outed. It needs to be looked at, definitely. Yeah. Well, the love eggs represent Fathington Cheshire Davies. Got it. And the love bugs represent when those eggs hatch. And was the doctor represent? My my, <laughs> you stumped him. <laughs> He's you got a look of terror on your face. <laughs> you know, I haven't really thought of that. Well, the lyric just kind of came out. Yeah, I'm trying to figure out where you would put in the uh, Instagram stories <laughs> lyrics. Yeah, yeah well, we'll have to do some type of. Uh, yeah, maybe you could edit a little bit, like update maybe... on his shirtless selfie, Farthington. Mm. He's a pretty good looking guy, charismatic yeah. too. All his Insta stories are so funny. Yeah. God. Damn it, he's funny. <laughs> yeah, man. What does he do? His Insta stories are so fucking funny, dude. Is it just like him going around his day, or do they feel like they he's thought about? No, them? he's just going around his day. Oh, <laughs> I don't know what would be funny? worse. For, yeah. What would be worse for you? <laughs> that seemed terrible. to crush you. So yeah. they're just they're just off the cuff, hilarious, totally oh. improv, just wow. Playing around in his house. Hey, he'll sit on his bed and tell a story. Then it'll be like outside, and mm. it's just very ah, light, easy. That daft boozer. What does that mean? <laughs> you, you've repeated that. No, you what know, is, is that, uh, daft. Uh, I know is crazy or stupid, and boozer is someone yeah, who drinks a lot. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 
<laughs> you sound like you're trying even... to. You sound like you're trying to convince yourself. I'm trying to think of something else that sounds kind of like that. <laughs> you know, he got an an endorsement, like an alcohol sponsorship. Whoa, that daft no. boozer! Not Parrot Bay. Yeah. <laughs> It is Parrot Bay. Shit, Farthington. Were you up I've for that? I've been going after Parrot Bay for uh, years. Uh, I love Parrot Bay. What is Parrot Bay? Is that a rum? What yeah, is- it's like it tastes like sun lotion. <laughs> Ew. <laughs> okay. How do you know? I love it. But he's not even the worst member of my band. Oh, well, I the don't person even... who took your place is not the worst member no, of your band. The Snake Sebastian Darlington Winterton. Oh no, who? Yes. What did he play? The drum machine or the synthesizer? Synthesizer. Yeah, I recently walked in on him having intercourse with my new wife Francesca in our marital bed. Oh no! Is I this know. why the band broke up? Yes. <laughs> oh my gosh, your wife. Yes. Your wife in, in your marital bed. Marital bed. Is that a separate the, bed you have? Uh, from yes, from when we got married. <laughs> and then you switched beds the, day two of the marriage? Yes. Yeah, well, and it, it was the honeymoon bed. <laughs> it was a honeymoon bed for about six months. Yeah. That's cool. Like a lot of beds in your house. A lot of ritual. Yeah. Well, this but, sounds like a terrible guy. Surely you haven't written a song about him. I have. have. What? This next song... <laughs> Is about what it's like to be betrayed by the same. <laughs> the same what? <laughs> it's about being betrayed at the same time by the best man at your wedding and the woman who told you, I do. Mm. Mm. I made a reservation at the restaurant of love where they only have tables for two. Instead of taking my order, the waiter gave me a kiss. Instead of food, I perfume <laughs> the love restaurant failed its recent health inspection because the kitchen is infested with rats I'm not talking love rats these are regular rats and they're biting all the customers and staff I got food poisoning at the love restaurant pretty sure it was caused by the rats I posted a one-heart review on Yelp.com slash love. Then the business owner contacted me privately. He said, why'd you give my restaurant a one-heart review? I said, because it was full of rats. He said, this is a small business and this review could ruin me. He cried over the phone and said he was trying his best. Thank you. That never gets to a chorus, does it? Oh, man. You get a lot that of That one is all new words. <laughs> what? It's all new the whole way through. It new felt words? Like yeah, I, that was my inspiration. New words the whole way through. <laughs> Meaning Don't repeat words. a thing. Oh, I see. So words we've heard of, but just. Yes, not yeah. new words. So if you, ever said, if you ever said the in that, you never said it again. Never. <laughs> Uh, let me look. <laughs> no. May no. Okay, wow. You can go back and check it off. They're all new. Right. So most of that was a metaphor, but you say the rats are real? Uh, yes. The restaurant res- represents my failed marriage, and the rats, uh, like I said, those are just regular those rats. Those are regular rats. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. So there were rats in your failed marriage? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> what percent well, yeah, of what we had a do. rat problem. A rat. Is that what led to you breaking up? Well, yeah, you take inspiration from everywhere, you know? You yeah. pull from all over. Chelsea, what... What uh, What percent of what you sing about is a metaphor <laughs> versus concrete and real? Well, it comes and goes. That person, that song <laughs> there was one afternoon. Oh, uh, okay. So that was all real. So, yes. and the and the owner of the restaurant was your wife contacting you saying that you well, she's no, a small business. I was writing a song and I was doing some Yelp reviewing. <laughs> okay. okay, and it kind of bled into each other. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's cool because that's, that's cool. like yeah. making real life. Yeah, 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 wow. yeah. But that song is about my best friend having sex with my wife. That's terrible. Yeah, mm. yeah. Mm. Um, and it's been awful. You know, my my mm. mind has been going to some really morbid places. I can um, tell. Yeah, yeah. And last night I actually had. Um, some thoughts of suicide. No, not suicide. Oh, my God. Do you, you need you, to call us some emergency? You say well, it's so cute. I can't tell whether this is a serious... Well, I was about to commit suicide uh, <laughs> by taking a bubble bath with my synthesizer. And oh, that's a ter- I mean, if it were plugged in, yeah. yeah. Is it battery operated? It or? is. Big batteries, though. Car batteries. A couple of car batteries. Car batteries, which yeah. would electrocute they you? They would have done me in, for sure. Okay, yeah. No. Um, but at the last second, I decided, no. 
No, instead I need to channel my depression into a song. Into your arts, that's yes. great, yes. So this last oh. song is called <laughs> Existence is Emptiness. Mm. Depression. Sadness. Madness. <gasps> All aboard the train of love. <laughs> We're going full steam ahead. Choo-choo, the caboose is full of broken hearts And the conductor is a kiss Train of love, full of broken hearts I must steer us straight to the train station of love There are train tickets and newspapers there But I'm always too heartbroken to read them Ooh. It's the train, it's the train train of love I pull the levers so many levers the train of love I'm shoveling coal it's shaped like hearts on the train of love choo 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 thank you wow. I, that <laughs> one I actually that was the best one and yeah. I'd love to hear it sung by a different singer just to yeah. see like someone whoa. like the new singer in your band what yeah. they could do with some of those notes yeah. no 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 <laughs> it also if I might say is the most reminiscent of your previous work no that's a brand new song uh, <laughs> that I wrote on the way here, yeah. uh, and it's completely original. In it every it way. seemed like you used the same ABC sample that you did on all in your previous appearances. <laughs> well, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. I think we were all pulling we'll never from know. each other. We'll, we'll never, never know. know. Yeah. What do kisses mean to you? Kisses? <laughs> <laughs> don't say that to stall. <laughs> <laughs> well, they're the ultimate metaphor for love, you know? They, they're they really a replacement. Yeah. Didn't you, did you say the conductor was a kiss? <laughs> <laughs> well, good, to me, a kiss is a noun. All uh, right. It seems You're like right. it. Yeah. Like I think to anyone, just, it is. is. No, isn't it a verb usually? Is it a well, gerund? Well, can, one can kiss, yes, but a kiss is a noun, yes. Mm. Is, is it? it? <laughs> I don't think so. All right. Look, I don't know is, is that your, Was that your last song that you... Yep. <laughs> okay, well, look, we need to take a break. When we come back, this is exciting. Can you stick around, Martin? I'd love to. Okay, great. Chelsea, we'll be right back with her. We have an alien coming up. This is exciting. We'll be right back with more comments. Comedy bang bang. <laughs> what do you want to do this year other than sleep better with your Lisa mattress? What, what, do you have a dream? Do you have a dream out there? Well, look, there's one company that I know of that can turn your dream into a reality, and that is, of course, Squarespace. Squarespace, yes! Squarespace makes it easier than ever to launch your passion project. Okay, look, maybe you're looking to start a new business. You got a new business idea? Great. Maybe you have uh, something that you want to put up online. You want to showcase your work. You want to publish content. Maybe you want to sell things. Do you want to sell products? Whatever. Who cares about you? <laughs> but look, Squarespace is the tool for you to help you do any of that. They have beautiful templates. And these things are created by world-class designers. And not just world-class template designers. These, these template designers have designed some of the most beautiful buildings in the world. <laughs> no, I don't know if that's true. But they do design incredible templates. And all of these templates have the ability to customize just about anything with just a few clicks. And you can easily use these to make a beautiful website yourself. Squarespace's powerful e-commerce functionality lets you sell anything you want online. And analytics help you grow your site in real time. Everything is opt optimized for mobile. Don't worry about that. Just right out of the box. Don't you worry. There's nothing to patch. There's nothing to upgrade ever. And buying domains is simple with them. You'll get all the help you need if you do need help with Squarespace's 24-7 award-winning customer support. Squarespace, they have empowered millions of people from the, the top designers to the, the world's best lawyers to, to wonderful artists. What about gamers out there? They help them. And look, this this is how you know they're serious. They even help restaurants and gyms, which I honestly, Squarespace, I wouldn't do that if I were you, but they they do. They even help restaurants and gyms turn great ideas into something real. Head over to squarespace.com/bangbang for a free trial. When you are ready to launch, use the offer code bangbang 
you're going to save 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain. That is squarespace.com slash bang bang offer code bang bang. <laughs> Comedy Bang Bang, we're back here. Chelsea Peretti, Brooklyn Nine Nine, on Thursdays on NBC at a, a what time uh, are we talking? Uh... Who you got me in the hot seat now? Oh boy. baby! Listen, once you clock out, you clock out. Look, <laughs> no, just, I'm kidding. Just turn I on your TV. Turn late on night. your TV like seven thirty. Watch extra or whatever the. I think is it's on. at nine. Is it a nine? I'm okay, pretty sure. Oh, well, it might be at eight. Might be at 8.30. Might be, it is 9. Okay, great. Just turn it on at 9 on Thursdays. You'll get it. Uh, Martin Sheffield Lickley working on his solo record. Hello. <laughs> <laughs> well, that really... That's it? I'm devastated. Uh, re- I'm really? finding about this new Instagram. <laughs> no, you found out about that... Uh, Quite a few ago. minutes ago, yeah. Yeah, well, I'm still just reeling you. over it. Yeah, nine, eight central. Just nine, eight central. You're on still in the, in the D in Dabda. Denial. Yeah, I am. Yeah. All right. Well, uh, uh, <laughs> let's get you all the way to uh, or at least uh, duh. Um, coming up next on the show, we have, uh, this is interesting, an alien. I've had aliens on the show before, I believe, but uh, <laughs> um, we'll figure out exactly what planet he or she, they, uh, are from. Uh, please welcome to the show, Chitter Chitter Click Click. Ah, mm. uh, hey, Scott. Hey, Chitter uh, Chitter Click Click. I'm a... Uh, yeah. What an interesting to, name. Well, uh, just to clarify for, for your listeners, I am uh, I hate this term, but uh, I'm a predator, alien. You, you, oh, like in the movie Aliens vs. Predator? Uh, you're, you're a predator, not an alien? No, the predators are aliens, the right? The predator. <sighs> why, is, always. why isn't that movie called Alien? <laughs> that movie should be called Alien vs. Other Alien. Believe me, I... Uh, uh, Two aliens fight. That's better. That's what we have this conversation all the time. It's, right. Yes, of course, predators Or predator versus aliens. predator because they're both predators, technically. They both prey upon humans. Uh, interestingly, predators uh, aren't really predators. The aliens are more predators. They're more predatory, although the predators, they shoot the things. The predators, yeah, the predators are more... What, are, uh, what if uh, Batman hunters. were to get involved? If Batman... Oh, Scott, I, I don't... Chelsea, get in on this. Come on. I Ooh. agree with Chelsea. I don't <laughs> oh, want to talk. God, oh, that's right. You I planned on got, yawning. I just got so She's, tired. Yeah. I don't know. What, oh, my God. Oh, oh Chelsea's, God. <laughs> Leaning into the uh, yawning thing, she's going to do it until it uh, until Have it we sticks. met before? Uh, have we? Have we? Have you um, met it? look familiar. You, you are, by the way, the classic predator. You have the dreadlocks. Yes, I have dreadlocks. Uh, I have the uh, mandibles. Yeah. Um, about eight feet tall. Right. Is chitter, chitter, click, click, is that, uh, that's your original language? Is Am I pronouncing it, it correctly? Country. Yeah, uh, it's, uh, you know, everybody knows that uh, the Predators talk with a sort of chittering right. click, but, uh, you know, we also, of course, have the ability to mimic uh, human speech. So that's what you're doing right now, that's is what mimicking I'm doing right now. speech. So that's yeah. in case anyone's wondering why I'm not uh, I've had chittering. Several, I've had guests on this show who say they're from different places, but they all sound Southern, right. and, they're, and they're not able to mimic... Hey. <laughs> They're not able to <laughs> accurately mimic human speech the way you are right now. Uh, well, yeah. That's, that's, uh, they shouldn't do that. <laughs> they shouldn't even try another accent. <laughs> um, that's funny, Scott. Is everything okay? Yeah, are you, you depressed? You, are you mimicking human depression? <laughs> I've... I, I've had a hard go of it. I, I, I have to tell you, um, if anybody knows anything about predators, it's a very... Um, it's an aggressive race of, of aliens. Right. It's, a, it's sort of a harsh place to be from. I'm trying um, to think of what I know about Predators. I know whoever wins, they lose, or, or we lose. Well. That, and, uh, they, and they go around, uh, they're in the jungle, and they can't see you if you're covered in mud. Well, we we do see we do see primarily in the infrared uh, uh, part of the spectrum. The spectrum, yeah, the okay. electromagnetic spectrum. So, right, you guys obviously look just sort of like orange blobs, yeah. to me, yeah. Um, but uh, that's fine. That's fine. You would prefer we didn't look like that. What do you mean? Well, you say it's that's fine. Like you'll take it. <laughs> Right, it's it's what I'm used to. People right, go, right, oh, right. you know, you know, people go, oh, like, how do you like my T-shirt? And I say, you know, I I can't actually see it. Because right, I, I right. See, you're you're I like see in, you're uh, like Daredevil. Uh, what about Chelsea? What about Daredevil? You're like Daredevil who just sees like you know a sonar vision. 
Um, I would talk Jessica Jones. Jessica Jones. Okay, you're like Jessica Jones <laughs> when she is waking up with a hangover. She can. She's groggy. Did can barely see, see anything. Yeah, sure. Okay. What about that villain in that one? What's his name? The again? Purple Man. Kill. His uh, name is kill like grave. bad guy. Oh, yeah. yeah. Kill. Kill. Grave. Kill. Grave. <laughs> kill grave. Um, bad. Bad. <laughs> Shoot doctor. <laughs> Uh, but so so what's would you wrong? fight Kilgrave? Yeah, w- if you fought Kilgrave, who would win? Would you do? Would what we he said? lose? No matter who wins, <laughs> I, I I would prefer not to fight. It's sort of what I came here to to talk about. Uh, oh really? You know, oh. In our society, it's sort of a tribal uh, society. Um, you get respect in our society by. Physical force. Physical force by 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 w- w- becoming blooded in a, a trophy ceremony where mm. you travel to a, a, a another hostile planet and fight uh, creatures there and bring home trophy skulls and skins and ears. And, uh, Sometimes, sure, or, ears, yeah. teeth, uh, penises, other mandibles. So predator uh, penises ever, don't. Does eat? predator ever come home and just have like a necklace full of penises? Uh. You know, then he starts playing around with them, like sticking them in his ears and stuff, and just having a fun time. Or fun time, they do that. It's 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 not it's not for somebody like me who's a little bit. They do more do of a, that. They huh? do, you said they do that. <laughs> they, they do that. So <laughs> they do confirmation do that? on that. really. But what you're wow. picturing, you're, you're picturing human penises, but but. Not necessarily. Do they, are the ball, at any given are there time, balls too, or just balls? The pe- balls. Yeah, there's I, balls. I was picturing various <laughs> penises from around the galaxy. Mm, okay. Mm, mm. <laughs> um, mm, 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 and re- and remember, nummy, of course, nummy. they're not. Um, they're not um, still warm because they're dead penises. So sure. they're not easy for us to see. They so don't travel well. They they. You know, if you want to show somebody your necklace of penises, <laughs> you, you, you would just slap them in the face with it, and, and hmm. or you could put it on Insta. <laughs> so you, you, but you're not like this. You're, you're a pacifist. I'm, I'm. You know, we, we, we live in this culture. Talk about a culture of toxic masculinity. Uh, mm. You know, mm. my planet is really. If you, if you, you know, for for a young predator, and again, I don't like that term, but I don't know what else to say. Yeah, it's very uh, mm-hmm. um, labels. Yeah. If 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 you're if you're a young predator who shows any kind of emotion or anything at all, you're told to come on, be a predator. You know, yeah. predator up, mm-hmm. and uh, yeah. we have this very limited view of what it is to be. Uh, 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 you know what 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 we value. Yeah. Uh, uh, and um, but you've gone against that. You you don't want to be like that. You know, <laughs> I'm wondering this. if you could ever answer a question without an uh, uh, enormous uh, pause uh, 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 uh. before like, you start listen, to speak. Listen, I know you're depressed, but pace it up. <laughs> My God. Well, this is a lighthearted show. They gave Come out on. cold brew beforehand. I feel like I'm really being given time to sort Well, of we're giving you time. Listen, guys, honey, we, we're working with we you. Don't, yeah, but we but don't have work. We're acting like my parents uh, just not I'm giving sorry. me the space to sort of uh, I'm so sorry, mean. so sorry. You know, we, we have a, a camouflage cloaking technology. Oh, that's right. That, that makes us sort of shimmer and be invisible. That's but, pretty. You are you know, invisible gorgeous. to other predators as well during that, or do the other predators, are they able to see you in the infrared spectrum? You can see in the infrared spectrum. So if it, so if uh, uh, I had like an infrared, you know, uh, scope on a rifle or something. I would be able to see you no matter what, regardless of your shimmering uh, cloaking technology. Yeah, you seem I confused I on think. this. <laughs> well, something you because we also have suits. We also have suits right. that can mask our heat signatures okay, and stuff. Okay. Um, right. So, but you don't want to be like the typical predator. You you find it reductive. Uh, your definition of what it is to be uh, whatever type of alien you are. A predator alien. Pre- a predator alien. Uh, we have invisible suits, but I like to say that we sensitive predators are the true invisible predators. <laughs> Uh-huh. Now, <laughs> what so makes I, you so sensitive? Because you keep saying you're sensitive, but I don't sense anything in you that feels like heart or soul. You just seem sad. Yeah. You is seem that what you down. came on the show to you say, like is you're sad? Red. I am I sad. You. Well, I came I on the show you. to thank you. Oh, uh, boy. That's you not the You remind me of want. a kiss. 
<laughs> is that How good so? or is that bad? <laughs> How so? <laughs> Don't get him angry. What does a kiss mean to you? <laughs> it's a it's an idea, you know? No, in many people's life, it's an actual thing. Thing it's a noun for a lot that of people. Happens to well, them. predators yeah. also we have wide mandible flaps, so we can't right. actually kiss. You can't kiss each other. What is oh. affection on your world? You rub flaps. You rub but the flaps? closest thing to affection, honestly, would be to slap each other in the head with a <laughs> penis necklace of severed. I mean, you know, for some people that would be great. nice. <laughs> yeah, no. maybe you could write a song about that, Martin. Hmm. Not right now. <laughs> anyway, I started an organization. Oh, you're getting to something. Oh, okay. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I started an organization called uh, uh, Sea Better- Org. <laughs> I started a- an organization called a Better Off Pred. <laughs> <laughs> for is it can I ask or, before, it before you say what it is and there it is is better off pred a parody of the expression better off dead or is that just something do you not know that expression it's, it's it is a wordplay it's it's funnier in the native uh chitter click language it is funnier oh yeah. really it's funnier than even it's pretty funny to us because it, it's oh, it rhymes good. with better off dead it's actually a um a play off of the name of a, a, a movie from my planet. What, which um, movie is this? Uh, well, Weather it, Off Pred? It's called, <laughs> well, in my native tongue, it's called... <laughs> right, but the tra- English translation... Why does that sound like Savion Glover? <laughs> <laughs> bring in Denoise or bring in Defunk. Bring in both. <laughs> hey, yeah, um, why do I have to choose? Yeah, don't make Come me mad. Ma- it was Sophie's choice. <laughs> Come on, why are, you, why, why are you so miserly with the, the it, funk it, and the... It, it, yes. uh, it loosely translates to um, better off uh, not alive. <laughs> right. And it stars a uh, famous uh, actor from my world named... Uh, Predator John Cusack. <laughs> <laughs> Interesting. So you started this organization. Started an organization. Better off for, pred. Better off pred for for young predators to to understand that there can be a better way. My dad oh. was a uh, he was a stern man, mm. and. Uh, he left home in the mid 1980s uh, to come to Earth for his uh, his blooding ceremony. His blooding ceremony. And, I think I know. Uh, and he never came back. I actually uh, think I know this predator. There's. I saw a movie you know about dad? this. I saw a movie about this guy. What happened? <laughs> uh, well, do you know the governor of California? Former governor of California, Arnold Schwarzenegger. Uh, uh, Jerry Brown. No, no. Uh, uh, before and after. Because uh, didn't he do it twice? <laughs> yeah, he did. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah, I in, know a lot in, about be, um, in between California him. local he, government. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Arnold Schwarzenegger. He was in the movie. It was in the movie about this guy. His daughter is engaged to Chris. Chris Pratt, Pratt? now, <laughs> who you that? may know from Parks and Recreation. <laughs> oh, that's cool. Yeah, yeah Jurassic he really Park. Got in shape. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah, yeah. A Jurassic Park. Park world, or world. world. Sorry. Hey, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> so, so there was a, a movie about your dad. He, uh-huh. he came down here, and a ragtag group of uh, came para- down here to Earth. Yeah, paramilitary outfit. Right. Uh, cr- crash landed, I believe, in some sort of jungle, uh, or 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 the, the reverse, where the, the your dad crash landed in the jungle. I can't remember exactly. He the- crashed. <laughs> Something I. Uh, Why would you tell me about a movie that you don't remember the details of? <laughs> I look. Are you saying that anytime police question a, uh, someone who may know anything about a murder, unless they know everything about the murder, they should just not answer questions? You're not being questioned. You offered information. So you're. So you'd rather hear nothing. All right, fine. I'm. I. I. I won't tell you any scrap of information about this. Scott, that you're argument. So angry today. That argument reminded me of a kiss. <laughs> mm. What do you do? You what want? Is, do you want? Were you British? 
<laughs> was I not just there? That <laughs> argument reminded me of a kid. Chitter, That's what I meant to say. Chitter, chitter, click, click. Do you want me to tell you what I know about this, or do you just... Yes. Or, well, I'll tell you what I know. Uh, what do you know? He told me he was going to Earth, and I begged him not to. Mm. He was a He was a dentist. On our planet. You know what, that, that must be a very lucrative line of work with the mandibles. and <laughs> That's actually a different. Oh, specialist. it's different. Oh, <laughs> yeah. really? Oh. The, the dentists on our world uh, tend to the smaller. Just the incisors ridges. and the. Oh, that's too bad. The mandibles are, are tended to by a different. Uh, oh, okay. So, so he was. But middle class? Middle class, upper middle class. <laughs> upper middle class. Great. Yeah. So no complaints there. Well, he, you know. <laughs> He was going, and I said, don't go. I said, leave those humans alone. They don't deserve that. Leave them be in their natural environment. You know, he was going, I'm going to go, and I'm going to bring back the skulls of these commandos. And I said, just... I don't know that they were commandos. I think you're thinking of a different group. (laughs) Why? That was, well, I mean, I saw a different movie about them. It was called Commando. (laughs) Well, that was about one commando. <laughs> well, I don't think the movie I saw was called Commandos. I think <laughs> was, re- the command well, they are com- I mean they're military. They're yeah, I don't, but I don't know whether that's interchangeable commando military. I don't know much about the movie, but <laughs> I just Arnold don't- Schwarzenegger's character in Commando is pretty much the same as his character in Predator. I don't know He's, whether in they're military, so you do know about the movie Predator. I gotta I gotta just. <laughs> They're mili- they're ex military who are brought in right. to okay. to solve a mysterious <laughs> situation. Situation. Sure. Although I don't know whether Arnold Schwarzenegger ever says in the movie Predator, "Hey, I'm a commando." Wait, isn't he a politician? In I mean, he is. He was. Yeah. He then did he, then movies? he he did movies, and then he was the host of Celebrity Apprentice. Wow. What a career. Yeah, I mean, real, when you think, he was a bodybuilder before all of this. Oh, my God. Yeah, That's the seriously. same guy? Yeah, same guy, yeah. So are you saying, Scott, there's a point in the movie Commando where Arnold Schwarzenegger says, I'm a commando? I think if, if I were to go see the movie Commando, and I don't recall every scrap of dialogue, scrap. but if he never said, I'm a commando in that, I don't know what the fuck the makers of that film are thinking, because Can that is a applause line dialogue? city. I'm a commando. Everyone goes, woo! You know, I'm hosting the WGAs on February 17th. Are you and, really? And calling it a scrap of dialogue, I mean, just on behalf of the WGA, that is I apologize. Just, you're right. You're right. I, it's not respectful to my fellow yeah, brothers. You know, writers, they're not writing scraps. Although sometimes uh, when I've been writing things, I would write something down on but a that's little... You. Mm, that's, that's you. That's true. That's true. You're known for kind of junky... <laughs> So what are you? So you do know what happened to your dad, or you don't know what happened to your dad? You begged him not to go. I begged him not to go. I said, "Those, let them, let them be. Let, let you, them be in their natural environment. You call them drug humans, cartels, and destabilizing Central American governments." And he said, "No." He was a harsh man. I love my dad. Ah, oh, Jesus Christ. I'm oh, sorry. <laughs> he hadn't had his blooding I, ceremony up to I, this point? No. You know, I have a lot of anger towards my dad. Yeah, mm. yeah, boy. But, you know, he's your dad. I have a colleague who can help you with this. He's He charges three times as much as me, but... Does he wear a black turtleneck? I, I, you know, his whole family was killed. Yeah, yeah, he's he's. Turned- I'm saying like at least you have your father. Right. Yeah. No, I no my father- my father saw a video of a little boy smoking a cig. I thought that was your son. <laughs> it, it was also his father. Was also my father. Oh, I. <laughs> And his postman. And my postman. Well, my postman mailed himself to the bottom of the ocean. Oh, that's right. I forgot. But look, I mean, he's turned his swords into plowshares. Uh, You know, he's made something of his life. At a certain point, we have to get over our pain and actually, you know, use it to fuel ourselves. Well, that's what I'm trying to do with my organization. With your organization. Tell us about your organization. You help people on your home planet? I help people on my home planet. I help, you know, <laughs> much ado has been made of of uh, alien versus predators. You know, the narrative is aliens and predators are always at each other's throats. Equally bad to us humans. Right, right. Um, you know, if we, if, if we win, you lose. Right, yeah, either way. It, it doesn't matter which way it goes. I guess we would win if 
a, an alien and a predator were to rush at each other at the same time and just like explode simultaneously. Right. And then it would be like, hey, tie, we win. But, you know, a lot of aliens are good, are good people. Ali- a lot of the aliens are. They're not yeah. even people. I were, well. <laughs> They're face huggers. <laughs> Face huggers. We, I, I do a lot of work with face huggers. Chelsea's uh, back t- so far away from the microphone <laughs> at this point. Fucking out creatures. of disinterest. They're not people. Well, they have emotions. Uh, I was, I'm saying I, I, I've worked with a lot of face huggers mm-hmm. around the issue of consent. Yes, and, some uh, people would probably be into it, right? Uh, yes, but you can't uh, just do it without asking. You know. Uh, so face huggers, uh, young face huggers, we uh, we get them to ask consent mm-hmm. uh, of their hosts before they plunge their uh, egg tube mm-hmm. uh, into their belly. Your, your song, very wonderful song, reminded Thank me you. of uh, the face huggers. Yeah. Laying. How, how many uh, have they acquired consent from? Sorry, what percentage of humans actually consent to to the face huggers? Uh, Inquiries. Uh, I'm not aware of any humans that have consented, but, but across the some, across the galaxy, there's other races that there's agree other to races it. Yeah. that um, I would imagine consent. other aliens' physiologies would be more adaptive to it. Uh, how? So, what do you mean? Well, you know, human beings once those that egg tube goes down, uh, our stomachs tend to explode uh, and killing us. Uh, and you think there are other alien races who maybe they have some sort of like uh, uh, you know like door in their bellies. Where where the alien can like not aware of any alien species with a belly door. <laughs> you you you've been around the the galaxy. I haven't. Right. I'm There's just no imagine. belly I'm, door. I'm selling. What's out there? No belly door. What's, what's out there? You would know more than I. Um. The the, the anything close to it? <laughs> belly window. Closest thing to we a belly door. We have kangaroos down here. They're like belly pockets. Not that far off from a belly door. Uh, I guess that's true. Um, you ever see Kangaroo Jack? Was that who's in that? Was I don't. That Hugh I, Jackman. I don't think he was in that just because he's Australian. Yeah, he's Australian. Because he's Jack in his name. <laughs> <laughs> who's Kangaroo Jack? So you think Hugh Jackman is in any movie with Jack in the title? Yeah, he's in Jack Frost, right? <laughs> and he's in and he's in Jack. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know who's in Kangaroo Jack, but I do know that uh, there, there's a dream sequence where the kangaroo uh, uh, boxes with uh, some of the protagonists of the film. Mm-hmm. But um, I guess what I'm saying is, you've been around. You know that uh, you know, uh, or or does everyone look exactly like we do, human beings? Is everyone humanoid in appearance? Most people, most most. Galaxy aliens are, are humanoid. Uh, really? I would imagine with different uh, uh, planets uh, having different climates and uh, uh, right. Sometimes they're wearing coats or. or, <laughs> or, or <laughs> That's the, the, I would That's love. the only difference: a coat or a tank top. Well, depending if it's cold, you know they they put coats. Chelsea on. has checked out of this. <laughs> I've never seen. <laughs> I think it goes without saying. Any I, of course, movies. yeah. Well, he's he he. Uh, you would consider him to be evil, or at least his his instincts, and well, he's trying to overcome. Like these. most toxic males, he's pretending he's not evil. So I see. So you I think this is all do? just? Uh, I mean, but yeah, aren't look, we? I come self- up against that a lot, and that's understandable. We have a uh, we have a long history. We have a reputation to overcome. You have four movies or so uh, that just here on documentaries. Earth documentaries. Mm-hmm. Yeah, mm. that that we've seen. Where and in each one, I go to each right. one. I'm like, maybe the predators have changed. Boom, boom, boom. Evil, 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 right. evil, right. all the time. So it's self pity. What are we supposed to do with this? Yeah. Well. I think there's a lot of positives to our race. Um, we we have a lot of fish netting. We we do a lot with net. Mm. So you ha- you make a lot of fish netting on your home world. Well, if you look at our apparel and stuff, our legs are <laughs> covered have a lot in sort of, fish. of a thick netting. So that could be the main export of your world. So if say you wanted to enter into trade negotiations with uh, Earth, you could offer fish netting. And perhaps invisibility cloaking technology. Visibility cloaking technology. Shimmer. Uh, I'd love a shimmer coat. Yeah, like a shimmery coat. I like can s- get you. I can hook you up with uh, one of those. We yeah, have, uh, be like a Harry Potter kind of thing. Just you yes, know, invisibility cloak. You know, I would love one and with, some net. Uh, I would love some netting. I can get you netting. I can get you a fair trade. And what uh, do you want? Shoulder in- mounted laser. <laughs> and what do you want in return? Yeah, what do you want? <laughs> what do you want from us? You're here on Comedy Bang Bang to get your message out there into the world. What do you want to say? I want to say that 
people people can change i i i have to believe that I, I, you know i i came here i was sent here for my blooding ceremony you were sent here to earth for yours uh-huh seems like someone was just sent here about in november or december or so and it didn't work out as as i recall so they're just like sending him every couple of months now? Did they watch his cigarette video? <laughs> what is a blooding ceremony? You yeah, boy, that was <laughs> early on. <laughs> I, yeah, I really wish you would have asked this question. Uh, he, he covered this, Chelsea. He covered this. So you were sent for your blooding ceremony here? I was sent here, uh, but I opted. Uh, I was. I went to Guatemala. Mm. And why, that's the other thing. Why are they? Why are all the predators coming to like Guatemala and we prefer Costa Rica? an equatorial clime? Mm. We mm. are uh, yeah, we're cold blooded. Uh, so right now it's a, it's a little cold for you right now here with the rain. It's a little chilly, but I'm yeah. comfortable here. You I are wearing a jacket. I have a yeah. jacket, <laughs> much like all the aliens out there. <laughs> that's a nice coat, pea a, coat. Thank you. I got it popped. I gotta say, those aliens that we were talking about, the face huggers and the, uh -huh. you know, I mean, the H.R. Giger looking motherfuckers, I mean, mm -hmm. those are so different than the humanoids you've described. Why are they so different? And everyone else is just humanoid with a coat or a tank top. <laughs> um, <clears throat> well, uh, I don't know. I guess you'd have to ask a, a, a galactic genetic research person. That's uh, not you. Person. That is not you. Uh, you're just a simple person who's here for your blooding ceremony. Well, the aliens are more like uh, insectoid. They're more like bees. They oh, so have they're a not queen. They have a sort I of see. a different, uh, almost a plant-like life cycle <laughs> with multiple. So they're. Me. So they I understand they, that I. Uh, are they the primary? Yawned, uh, at some point <laughs> earlier. No, I have a tickle during <laughs> your. <laughs> are they, are you they the? Were, you, oh, <laughs> hang on a second, Scott. Sure. You, now, now, Chelsea. <laughs> oh, you know my name, you little predator. <laughs> <laughs> you were you were you were doing an interview earlier yes and um i uh i had a, a physiological reaction having nothing the interview you were doing Fatigue. was very it's a little colder a little colder oh, here than your you. normal climb. i was fully engaged you need uh, a little oxygen going to your brain you need a little extra oxygen you mm -hmm. predators need a little extra oxygen. Humans need a little extra oxygen. And sure. I, Who's going to turn down some listen, oxygen? That's your story. You're sticking with it. I got a tickle in my throat. <laughs> <laughs> um, you've done you've done this a few times now. I, I think you've made Ooh. your point. You you you, you yawned uh, twice uh, early on. Uh, <laughs> Look, chitter chitter, click click. If I can get you back on, chitter, on target, chitter. Cluck, click. Cluck, click. Sorry, oh. sorry. Uh, you, you're here for your blooding ceremony. Are you? You're not gonna. You're not gonna kill us, are you? No, Scott. I, I went. To, I, I'm, I'm taking a little extra time. I went to Guatemala. I uh, saw the ruins of Tikal. Oh, that, no, they're lovely. I hear. Mm -hmm. I have to mm -hmm. What do you think? Beautiful. Oh, it's great. They yeah. filmed some of Star Wars there. Oh, uh, which one? It, it, the the first one, uh, uh, A New Hope. A New the, Hope, uh, really. Uh, the rebel base on Yavin 4. Oh, they filmed that there. Wow, they really uh, went the all over the mm -hmm. world. Wow, to film that. Oh, you know, yeah. they've, they in Hawaii, they filmed a, a part of Jurassic Park on those big cliffs <laughs> out there in Kauai. <laughs> wow. Yeah. <laughs> They filmed Lost in Hawaii, right? Yeah, well, uh, primarily now it was we're in Hawaii. Talking. Hey, I love she's Lost. Back. Wait she's a minute, back. you like Lost? <laughs> ding, 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 ding. You got me. You reeled me right back in. Wait Cal a minute, Lost. Go. By the end of Lost, it's all about the binary of good and evil. Well, so they say. Yeah. But it's really all about Cal Drogo. Cal Drogo? Yeah. Talking about Game of oh, Thrones. Oh, shit. Game of Thrones. <laughs> <laughs> wait, wait. What was the purpose of Lost? The purpose? What, no, no they were fucking around in heaven or whatever by the end. <laughs> wait, no, but who was the hot person? Oh, the guy who said Freckles. Sawyer. Yeah. Fre oh, yeah. Sawyer. I'm uh, sorry. Yeah. It's all about Sawyer. <laughs> <laughs> so, in your mind, Sawyer from Lost and Khal Drogo from Game of Thrones yes, occupy predator. the same space. Same space yes, in your predator in your reference part of your brain. Khal yeah. Drogo's only in season one, also. Of, uh, I know, and what a season it was. 
Now he's got the number one movie, Aquaman. Mm-hmm. You ever participate in something like that? In what Aquaman in, participated in, Aquaman? in, or in making a movie? Listen, I'm just trying to play You're, ball. Yeah, I, I am it. out of my element. I, get I don't it. know what predators are outside of the real world. Toxic men that come after us on the daily. That's what he's saying. He's symptomatic of of what we see here down here on Earth and in America, where just masculinity is is a problem, and we should we need to redefine what it means to be a, a strong person. So, what are you gonna do? And what do he you started promise? a whole thing. He started better off pred. <laughs> Well, what is better off Pred? What's their He's platform? never talked I about it. What's your platform? I can't re-explain everything. <laughs> Did you already <laughs> say you're <laughs> not? Then yeah, he, he explain his platform. I mean, b- the, he, the bare minimum. Okay. He brought it up like it was something he was going to go into. <laughs> That's what I thought. That Mostly had, they that talked had about. Beats. No. But you know what? <laughs> now then, he accuses me. You haven't been, but you've been doodling. Yes. And you've been on your phone. Absolutely. And you've been uh, mock masturbating. <laughs> Did you know that? Masturbating. Yeah, that's where you think about masturbating (laughs) in a funny way. (laughs) Look, Chelsea, I apologize for Chelsea. I've been engaged. You you can't argue that I haven't been engaged. I have been been engaged. Extremely engaged. You guys you guys talked about commando for a while. We did get off track talking about commando. Chitta Chitta, can I ask you, you sell netting? You sell netting, maybe? Well, we're talking about a theoretical uh Trade. Trade exchange, yeah. but oh. I could get you netting. Well, yeah, I'm looking to dredge a pond that my nana drowned in. Oh, now, no, what happened to your nana? Well, she went out on a little canoe to smoke a cigarette. Okay. And she drowned. Mm, that'll oh, happen. Yeah. So I want to dredge the pond. To, to get her butt. No one's <laughs> looked for her? The police probably could. <laughs> they said, they said no, yourself. thank you. Yeah, they said, do it yourself, Mom. How big is the pond? <laughs> oh, my God. I mean, to be honest, it's a puddle. It's more of a puddle. Wait, you guys, you when you talk about ponds and puddles, from a puddle? Eng- English people, when they talk about ponds and puddles, they're talking about the Atlantic Ocean usually. Well, right. yeah, yeah. No, no, no. I'm talking about a small puddle. I can see her back. I can see like a <laughs> Just back. pick her up. Just reach right in there. And- yeah, I'm not going to j- go out there in these shoes. <laughs> oh, I didn't get a look at those. Wow. Look. What is that? Is that gold and... Diamonds? Those are like Jimmy yes. Choo's. Jimmy Choo's, gold and diamond wow. shoes. Wow. Do you want me to get your <gasps> nana out of the puddle? Would you? I could. You'd have to. Are you going to, What do you? when do you want to come over? What time? I could do it. Well, I have a spaceship. Uh, uh, this is back in England? Yeah, yeah, you could come over. But don't stay too long and I don't, I'm not looking for, this is just serious. to get my. My nana. Yeah, out of the but puddle. it would be polite if you were to invite him in, maybe for some tea. Crumpets. And, I mean, we could be major. there in just a, a few minutes. Some I have clotted a cream. Yeah, he's it's, got a spaceship. It's sort of steamy inside. It's a little wet. Oh, yeah, but that's what ship, he likes. But, so, yeah, but it's like going to a nice steam. But you're a predator. Mm-hmm. I'm a little wary. Well, yeah. I mean, normally, if a predator were to pull over to by the side of the road and say, "Hey, get into my vehicle," believe me, your your skull. Wouldn't gain me much respect as a, uh, as a trophy. The shape of it? Well, or? hey, I mean, <laughs> I could be more for you. What does one need to what? do to have a skull that... <laughs> yeah, what are you looking for? Yeah, what kind of skull are you looking for? Well, typically one that, that you know, uh, presented a challenge oh. uh, in life. Uh, you can tell that from skulls. You can tell how masculine someone is or how, how much of a fighter they are. Well, I... I guess not. I guess I could you just, just tell, tell some, everybody yeah, that just, I there was, you had won an some epic battles. battle with you yeah. and take your. I mean, yeah. if I help your nana get out of the puddle, could <laughs> could I take your skull? Sounds Wait. like an equitable trade to me. Oh, no, how did I just how did I just talk myself into wanting? I'm needy. I want you to cut my head off and take it home. People are no, into never stuff mind. like this. That actually is like there's people who like agree to have someone kill them. It yeah, kind of I don't know them. what you're into. Yeah, people in Germany, you know, like mm-hmm. hey, cut off Always. my cut off hey, my wait penis. A and- if you don't, you have a whole dead family. Yeah, you could cut off I all could their, take skulls. their skulls. Look, Martin knows a dead person in every graveyard in the United States. Yeah, I mean, if you, I can take you on. I'm on a. Now this yeah. is kismet. This is why I do this. This yeah. is why I go around and talk to people. Yeah, 
He could exhume all of their bodies. Yeah, I mean, I'm on a 14 cemetery tour right now. Yeah. I mean, my whole thing is trying to get away from the violence of our society. But, but I mean, if they're I came already back dead. with a ship Here, full of skulls. I have a proposition for you. You're on a 14 cemetery tour. Mm-hmm. Maybe a uh, uh, chitter chitter <laughs> cluck click could come on stage and dance around like it's a flaming lip show, you know, during the show. Uh huh. And then just gather one of the skulls from someone that you know. In create the, a diversion. Create, I can, <laughs> yes. I sing Create a Diversion and you cut off the heads yeah, of my you have relatives. A, you have a song called Create a Diversion, right? I do. I do. Can I hear it? <laughs> no. <laughs> I don't have to try. This sounds like kismet here. It sounds like a match made. Could I join you on stage? I have a sort of a kabuki kimono (laughs) thing I do. Yeah, with netting and yeah. 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 Okay. I think this is great. This could be fun. Yeah. This solves everyone's problems, Do you play the synthesizer? I I mean, I have huge claw hands. Yeah, but maybe you could play with your mandible. Those are about the size. I mean, they're big for mandibles and teeth, but they're, you know, about... Maybe I could play with your mandible. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Hold on. Wait, this, is, this is a different Predator. proposition. <laughs> I don't I'm, I'm not. I don't know what you're into. I, I don't know what Usually predators just... come to this planet to kill humans, but... <laughs> I've never tried loving them. <laughs> okay, Predator. That's okay. I'm. I, it's fine if you're into that. I'm just, I want to put up some boundaries here. I'm not going to be, you know, like with the face huggers, I don't need you uh, sticking your mandible into me or anything like that. I don't, I do not give you consent, but yeah. it's fine. I'm Fair not judging enough. you. I'm not judging Fair you. Fair enough. All right, look, uh, this is a great, I think this is a great solution for you guys. I think that, uh, uh, what are you saying? Oh, what did you say what, to what did you just say Who are you to? saying that to? Oh, oh. <laughs> wait a who, minute! Is he, he going rogue? Is there others I don't know. here? Is it, who are who are to whom are you addressing? Him, him. to Martin. Me. Yeah. Right. You're talking to me. I okay. Said, it seems that's like said, that's like the opposite of Robert De Niro. <laughs> you are talking to me. <laughs> hey, does this mean you anything? are talking to me? <laughs> Yeah, is, is she speaking predatories so or little race? <laughs> oh no! Oh, oh my no, Chelsea! No. All right, look, we prefer not uh, to. Guys, we're running out of time. Uh, I, I I hate to say it, but that la- this last segment has taken up our entire show. We're running out of time. <laughs> <laughs> Just the pauses <laughs> is all I'm saying. But look, we we have one last final feature on the show, and that's a little something called plugs. The show is almost over, but there is one more segment where you can tell the listeners where they should be present and when to use their eyes and ears so they can mark the calendars. The plugs. Ooh, nice and short and sweet. That was Elvis Sings the Plugs by Hopefully Spoilers. Thank you so much to Hopefully Spoilers. If you have a plugs theme, go head on over to the Earwolf message boards and put them on there. Uh, all right, guys, what are we uh, plugging? Let's go over here to Chelsea. What do you like to plug? I have any- only one thing to plug. What do you got? WGA Awards. That's right. How, do, be, how do we see these? be on TV. So you want us to be nominated and come? Be nominated and attend. And guess what? It's going to get inside. Uh, no, also, um, no, I think they're going to, there'll be clips online for those of you that oh, care clips. about my career. So if you, if you can only watch 30 uh, minutes of television a week, just watch clips of this WGA award show. Uh, it won't even be that long. Oh, okay. Yeah, so you yeah. can watch other stuff in the mix. Great. Love it. Also, Who do you hope wins? As always, please check out my Twitter account. Mm. I'm always spouting off about something. What are you? Uh, what are you again? Are you Aquarius Pisces cusp? Well, mm-hmm. Great. All right, uh, Martin Sheffield Lickley. What do you want to plug? Oh uh, yes, I would like to plug a new show on Comedy Central called The Other Two. Premieres January 24th at 10:30. Really? It premieres this week. Uh, yes. Is it at this 10:30. week? 10:30. Yes. Yes. So this Wednesday. No. Yes. <laughs> Thursday? <laughs> is it? Yes. This. Well, the 23rd. You say 24. 24. <laughs> January 24th, uh, this Thursday. Thursday. Did I say 23rd? Jeez, so, I'm devastated all the time. So here's Fothington's an- Instagram stories have me furious. Yeah. I saw oh. you watching them. He was just sitting on his bed yeah. <laughs> being funny. Yeah. So here's a nice night for you. Watch uh, Brooklyn Nine-Nine at 9 p.m. Yeah. on NBC. Yes. 8 Central. 8 Central. Then switch over, switch to, Comedy over to Comedy Central, Central. At, at what time, you say? 10.30. 10.30, the other two. Is it preceded by 
something on Comedy Broad Central? Broad City. Broad City. This is a great night. Just stay hmm. in. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> Wonderful. The other two. <laughs> yeah, the other two. And then you can come to Atlantic City at UCB the second Thursday of every month. Oh, that sounds fun. That's a fun show. All right. I um, mean, I'll also be on more Brooklyn Nine-Nines. Yeah, I, I know. Sh- I failed to mention. Yeah. But. We know. You're okay, on the, for, you don't know how many more weeks, but you're on it. Well, I do know, but yeah. Okay, very cagey. Uh, uh, all right, uh, chitter, chitter, cluck, click. What are you plugging here? Well, uh, funnily enough, I have a, a plug related to Martin. Oh, you do? Uh, he has okay. A show premiering, and uh, in fact, he and I are embarking on a 14 cemetery tour. Oh, yes, okay. we are. We were talking, we, uh, we're doing it. I'll be doing my kimono routine. <laughs> Give us a little bit of it. Is it mainly physical? This it's, routine? It's completely physical. It's completely physical. It's a lot of. Do you have a sword or anything, or is it just sashaying around with a kimono? It's uh, it's not sashaying. <laughs> I, I don't mean to be reductive when I say sashaying. It's I, movements, and it's a bit of a tea ceremony. <laughs> <laughs> this, this oh sounds my great. God. It's going to be great. One thing I, we have talked about is his health insurance. He mm-hmm. has so many different dentists. Right, yeah, you know, the te- Multiple teeth, the mandible. It's yeah. going to be expensive yeah. for me, but I'm, I'm willing to do it. Okay, well, congratulations. 14 <laughs> cities, too. You're paying for 14 dental. Cemeteries. 14 cemeteries, most of them in the same city. Oh, okay. <laughs> Um, I want to plug, hey, look, I'm on three episodes of uh, the television show I'm Sorry on True TV. The first, my first episode is this Wednesday. So uh, check it out on True TV. I don't know what time it's Oh, no, I think it's on 10 p.m. That's Andrea Savage's show, I'm Sorry. My The first of my uh, three episodes will be on this Wednesday. Check it out. And what are you saying? Well, He's I'm, on the phone. Oh, sorry. I didn't realize you're on the phone. Look, let's close. Oh, by the way, we're going to close up the plug bag here. <laughs> but I want to debut... Okay, look, every year Ben Schwartz and Horatio Sands, they do, every year it's worse. They do a worse (laughs) version of the closing up the plug bag theme. This year is terrible. Uh, We rely on our fans to remix these things, and uh, Pressman Easter uh, has decided to remix it, along with another one of our favorite remixers, Michael Hardigan. They have joined forces, two of our incredible remixers, they've joined forces to remix this Terrible, terrible closing up the plug bag theme. This is the debut. Let's listen to it now and close up the old plug bag. Close your eyes and open. Better, not awful. I not mean, ter- I mean, you were scowling, Predator, or, or maybe that's your mandible. I, no, I, can't... I was, I was smiling. You were smi- That was smiling for you. Okay, yeah. so uh, if I were to say turn your frown upside down, then you would look like you're frowning. Okay. Um, I mean, compared so, to the way I write, they could fit more <laughs> words in. There could be more words. So not bad. I mean, definitely better. I want to thank uh, yeah. Pressman Easter and Michael Hardigan for doing that. All right, guys. Well, look, uh, we're, we're coming up to the end of the show. Chelsea, I want to thank you for uh, the first half of, of this episode when hey, you were fully engaged. I always <laughs> fall off in the second half. I know. That's, you know that's that. That's the Chelsea Peretti promise. I'm addicted to my phone. I know. I know. I uh, understand predator i get it's it bedtime for my baby soon i get it i, get I it. have a lot of hey bag of excuses yeah um speaking of bags uh we just closed it and martin uh thank you so much for returning absolutely thank you for having and me. chitter chitter cluck click uh you know good luck <laughs> With your uh, embarking upon this, it sounds like a one-city tour. Scott. Yeah, it's actually just that cemetery on the way into Cemet- New York City. Wait, it's just one cemetery <laughs> now? It's <laughs> a big, it's a, that big Jewish this cemetery. Changed, <laughs> this changed right. so fast, <laughs> okay, this tour. Guys, we'll see you next time. Thanks. Bye. <laughs> 
Want to hear Earwolf pilots before anybody else? We made a podcast feed just for you. Earwolf Presents is full of great stuff, like preview episodes for upcoming shows, peeks behind the paywall, and pilots for podcasts that haven't even been made yet. It's like getting to listen in behind the scenes here at Earwolf. Starting January 21st, Earwolf Presents will have a bunch of new pilots for you, like Edgar Montplacier's The Wokest. Catch conversations between the wokest man in the world and comedians like Reza Lachea. Also, hear upcoming pilots The Florida Cast, Wow, You're Native American Too, This Week in Sports, and Carl Alarm all throughout the month. Let us know what you think of them with hashtag Earwolf Presents. Subscribe to Earwolf Presents to hear more great episodes from around the network and behind the paywall, like an episode of Drew Tarver's Strictly Business with Derek Contrera, or Act One of Matt Besser's punk musical, Stolen Idea. Just search for Earwolf Presents in your podcast app and subscribe so you don't miss an update.